So with qualification having just wrapped up, the draw for the 2019 CONCACAF Gold Cup took place last night, and Canada is... Wait, what was that? The draw was for the Nations League? But that doesn't make any sense. The Nations League doesn't start until the fall, and the Gold Cup starts in June. Ah, uh, damn it, CONCACAF can't do anything right. So, last night was the draw for the 2019-2020 CONCACAF Nations League. The draw for the Gold Cup, which happens before the Nations League, is taking place on April 10th because reasons. Anyways, last night was the draw for the Nations League, and it could have been better for Canada, it could have been worse. They got drawn into a group that I think will very much challenge their abilities, and it will be an incredibly difficult challenge for them to move on to the finals of the Nations League, which kind of sucks because we know that the Nations League will have some effect on qualifying for the 2022 World Cup. It's not revealed how it will affect the qualification for the 2022 World Cup as of yet. I would assume that doing well in the Nations League would move, move you on to some sort of extra round or some sort of extra way to qualify for the World Cup in addition to the regular World Cup qualification. I assume it'll be like the European Nations League where the winners of each group got get to go to a playoff for next year's Euro Cup and in addition to the regular Euro Cup qualifying, it just will probably add an extra step onto the qualification if you don't qualify through the regular qualification route. So I'm going to run through all the groups for the Nations League, do a bit of prediction, obviously spend a bit more time on Canada. Conveniently they're in Group A, so I'm going to get to them first. And here we go. Group A, the United States, Canada, and Cuba. Why did Canada have to get drawn in with one of the big two guns? Oh no. Literally, I think everyone wanted Honduras to be the pot A team that they were up against. Honduras was probably the weakest of the four pot A teams. And we end up with the United States, which isn't unbeatable. The United States have had a lot of rough times recently, did not qualify for the most recent World Cup. That's a huge hit to them. You can probably imagine that with the Nations League having something to do with the qualifying for the World Cup, the United States is going to be trying very hard to win so that they can get themselves to the next World Cup and not disappoint their fans and their country for two years in a row. Canada should very easily be able to beat Cuba. I'm not worried about relegation. I think that the Canada and United States games, particularly the one that is going to be in Canada, are going to be insane. I am hoping that Canada, the USA, takes place in Toronto so I can go see that game because that would be, that's going to be an absolutely crazy game in the Nations League. These two countries do not get to play each other nowhere near enough in the men's soccer bracket. And the fact that now they're going to play each other twice within the course of a year is going to be so much fun to watch. Group B has Mexico, Panama, and Bermuda. Poor Panama. Oh my god. You guys literally drawn into any other group and I'd say I would have had a great shot in making the Nations League final. Instead you have to deal with Mexico, the undisputed kings of CONCACAF. Bermuda, this is going to be your happy to be here moment. You get probably put into the toughest group out of any of them in the Nations League draw, having to deal with two teams that made the World Cup last year in Panama and Mexico. Honestly, it's a huge surprise that you're even there. Get some good experience playing against these top class CONCACAF opposition and then go and dominate League B once you get relegated. And if you stay up, oh my gosh, you're sending a really good team down. Group C, Honduras, Trinidad and Tobago, and Martinique. Honestly, this is a toss-up of who could win. Both Trinidad and Tobago or Honduras can pull it off. Hell, Martinique, I wouldn't even count them out of winning it, let alone getting relegated. This group, honestly, is a complete toss-up. I would put my money on Honduras, though, just because they've traditionally been the better soccer nation of those three. But really, this group is anyone's game. And finally, Group D, which is Costa Rica, Haiti, and Curaçao. This should be Costa Rica's group, but Haiti won the Nations League qualifiers. I would not be surprised if they pulled a rabbit out of a hat and won the group. Now, to be honest, I don't see a way in which Curaçao does not get relegated in this group. They're going up against two of the better teams in CONCACAF, and like, again, this is a bit of a happy to be here moment, so we'll see what they can do, if they can pull off any upsets, and I probably would not be surprised to see them in League B in the next iteration of the Nations League. And yeah, that's the Nations League League A groups. Honestly, I'm expecting Mexico to win, like, it 
should never be close in a CONCACAF matchup. Mexico is just by far and away the best team in CONCACAF. No questions asked. The U.S. is just kind of a mess right now. There are a couple teams that are young and up and coming, and I'm really excited to see if they can make any noise in this Nations League, and also the Gold Cup that's coming up this summer. But yeah, if you want to hear more about the Nations League, the Gold Cup, and just CONCACAF in general, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and see you around.